Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. Do you know that Nigeria is the third largest producer of ginger in the world? Maybe that's why we have this ginger touch. Ginger, oh, ginger. And time's up. As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. If I have money, I will maximize this place. I have the capacity to plant 500 hectares a year. Parasites is the major problem also in farming. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. You can't plant the same time somebody can plant. Nice plant. We have to follow the NAMIT report to know when the rainfall and you know, the best is So that is the challenge. If tomato touches the water, then it starts rotting. Tomato should not touch the water. This is Farm and Fortune. Tonight on Farm and Fortune. But even with the complaints, since they don't have any alternative, even with the complaints that they have raised, they still sell to us anyway. So at the moment, nobody's regulating the industry. I can say nobody. The first person to drop the answer wins the game. It's all coming up right now. Tonight on Farm and Fortune. What exactly are these policies you are referring to that we need to be uh, to put in place for our cocoa to come up again? In Ivory Coast, the government structured the industries with policies and brought investors through bilateral agreements. Which of the following is harmful to a cocoa? It's tree? all coming up right now. Did you know, according to the International Cocoa Organization, that Africa produces 77% of cocoa all over the world? Mm. And if you consider that over 4 million tons of cocoa is produced annually, mm. that figure is a high percentage. In fact, over 40% of cocoa produced in the world is processed in Europe. You see, everybody loves chocolate. Mm. You can see that in our demand yearly. Mm. In fact, 95% of the world's cocoa production is exported. And you know, don't worry about all that statistics. We're going to break everything down for you on this show. And we? of course, we promise you that today's show will be chocolately interesting. Don't go anywhere. My name remains Helen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And you're welcome to Fam and, and Fortune. Fortune. Welcome back, it's still fam and fortune. We have a veteran researcher as our special guest for today. It's from Koko Research Institute of Nigeria. It's no other person than Mr. Olayinka Taiwo. Good to have you in the house. Thank you very much for having me. We're it's glad my pleasure to being have here. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Africa supplies 77% of cocoa all over the world. But how many of this comes out from Nigeria? Uh, well, quite a number of, um, as you know, Nigeria is one of the highest producers of uh, cocoa in West Africa. Yes. I think after Cote d'Ivoire, we have Ghana, then we have Indonesia, and then Nigeria is the next. Wow. So quite a number of uh, quantities being produced okay. in Nigeria. And I want to believe that out of that 77%, um, we should have, a, I mean, a tangible number, I mean, percent, that is being contributed by Nigeria into the world uh, uh, cocoa. Uh, over four million tons, you know, annually. Mm -hmm. uh, From global, Nigeria? No, no, in the world. In global the world, okay, figures, yeah. you know. Okay. And Nigeria's figures are not that impressive. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's dwindling. Yeah, exactly. Why? What's wrong? What's the problem? Uh, well, uh, as you as you know, I I want to believe it is as a result of our discovery okay. of oil. Okay. Because Nigeria used to be one of the leading producers of cocoa in mm -hmm. the mid-50s, 60s. Then immediately we discover oil, focus actually shifted. Mm. From cocoa? From, from, I mean, from, from, from cocoa to oil. oil. Mm. And ever since then, you know, we've been declining. Uh, so if I get you right, from. immediately Nigeria discovered oil. We just left our we cocoa. Lose focus. But how can we get this glory back? How can we restore our glory of cocoa industry? Well, not until not until uh, proper policies are put in place. One, some of the policies has to be revitalized. Like what? Um, okay, uh, let me just take a clue from what happens in, in Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. okay. Now, Côte d'Ivoire 
has a lot of incentives for the farmers. Okay. They finance the farmers. Not only that, their extension officers are up and doing. Okay. Unlike Nigeria, where, you know, funding is not really available for the available farmers. Available for as the much. farmers. Okay. And then we also need to, uh, uh, you know, encourage the farmers to kind of change their ways of doing or Things. producing cocoa. Mm. Like currently, we have some series of hybrid cocoa in cream that are being produced in cream. We call them TC1 to TC8. Okay. And these are varieties that are high yielding. They are varieties that are disease resistant. Okay. They are varieties that are highly maturing. Okay. And I see no reason why if those hybrids are being planted by our farmers, I see no reason why we should not be on top of the world mm. in terms of cocoa production because these are, I mean, hybrids that can produce four times what the farmers used to have. You see, we have, one of the problems we have in this country is policy consistency. Mm. One government comes with one policy. They change uh, it. They change it. Another one comes and they then it again. abolish the one. The former the one. The former one. And then they take up with their own. So all these problems and the challenges are the things that are surrounding us in the Nigerian cocoa industry. However, we have a story mm -hmm. that you know, uh, brings hope to the forefront. That's right. Uh, that despite all the challenges of the cocoa industry, this particular story will brighten up your day because they've been able to add value and bring themselves to the top of the conversation in the cocoa industry, uh, industry, industry especially yeah. in the export uh, department. So let's sit back now and take a short break. Watch this story about the Ivorian cocoa industry. industry. And don't forget, you can be part of the conversation. You can add value to yourself. No more about agriculture and farm and fortune by simply going to the Google Play Store and downloading the Udongo app, and then you can get more information from there. But right now, don't go anywhere. Let's watch this story. We'll be right back. When you choose to play on the fields of the ancient agrarian marketplace, consider a good coach to take along with you. The Udongo app is your gateway to the Nigerian agricultural ecosystem. Whether you are a newbie or an oldie, signing up instantly connects you with a community of other farmers, products, agents, distributors and resources all in one place. Access our unique and simple interface from the bustling big cities to the most remote regions across Nigeria. Enjoy full access to real-time farming solutions that help you make timely and profitable decisions. Or allow our one-on-one -on -one consultancy services cheer you on with each move you make. As a newbie or oldie looking to make a big agricultural food spread, feel secure knowing you have the best coach always in your pocket. Udongo app is your personalized farming coach, available to you every time, anywhere, just at the click of a button. Download the Udongo app from the Google Play Store now and enjoy new opportunities. West Africa dominates the world's cocoa export industry, with Ivory Coast and Ghana as the highest exporters of cocoa in the world. While the Ivorian and Ghanaian economies thrive on this venture, Nigeria is yet to harness the full potential of her industry. Let's take a look at how Ivory Coast and Ghana grew their cocoa industries to become the key drivers of their economies. In Ivory Coast, the government structured the industries with policies and brought investors through bilateral agreements. The government also controlled the minimum market price, invested in input and improvements, streamlined the channel of distribution, amongst other things. The Ghanaian government focused on tax rebates to encourage export. Rough processing was also incentivized with tax-free machinery import, but the output was funneled towards export with high taxation for domestic supply and almost no taxes for export. With falling cocoa prices, 
Nigeria needs to plan towards sustaining the cocoa industry beyond export. Exploring internal solutions, the president of Ghana, Nana Akufo Addo, said, Ghana no longer wants to be dependent on the production and export of raw materials, including cocoa beans. We believe that there can be no future prosperity for the Ghanaian people in the short, medium or long term. If we continue to maintain economic structures that are dependent on the production and export of raw materials, we can put Ghana at the high end of the value chain in the global marketplace and create jobs. As Nigeria grows her cocoa industry, she must think long-term and sustainability through efficiency at all levels of the value chain. I mean, sir, that, that was a nice story. Mm -hmm. Very encouraging one to see how the Ivorian cocoa industry you know, broke all the barriers, you yeah. know, despite all the challenges. Now, let's look at the Ivorian cocoa industry and the Nigerian one. What are we doing wrong? What are the similarities between the two countries in terms of our cocoa? Let's first of all look at what are the similarities to and what are the differences? What can we copy from them or do to get our story out? And I want you to also answer this third question. Nigerian cocoa used to be, like we say, banging. It used to be popping. It used to be highly sought after. All of a sudden, at a point, the complaints about pesticide, complaints about quality Aroma. is going down. Is it still highly sought after? If not, what can we do? Well, thank you very much. Like I said earlier, um, the main focus in Ivory Coast is cocoa because it forms bulk of their foreign economy. earnings mm. or economy, so to say. But then in Nigeria, as we all know, our revenue comes from oil. oil. And that is where the problem starts, mm. started from. Uh, with the discovery of oil, cocoa was, I mean, was more or less abandoned. In fact, agriculture generally was abandoned. And that has been the case ever since the early 70s till date. However, a lot of policies have been evolved in agriculture, you know, from either the federal government, or what have you. But again, we have problem of policy consistency. Hmm. You know, various administration has been, you know, bringing one policy or the other, forgetting the old one, bringing another new one. So it's like starting all over all again, again. Hmm. and so on and so forth. So that has been uh, an issue that has to be dealt with. If we, I mean, if we want successive growth, in cocoa production in Nigeria. And like I rightly said, Ghanaians, uh, sorry, Ghana, Ivory Coast, uh, who, who are more or less uh, the leading cocoa producer, mm -hmm. I mean, in the world today, are there because they pay more attention on cocoa production. Hmm. They give their farmers more incentives. And not only that, the extension agents are up and doing. Mm. Not only that, they finance cocoa. Hmm. They subsidize inputs. Because you can imagine a farmer who needs money to probably uh, do some clearing or probably uh, do some, uh, what do you call it now? Pesticide application. Pesticide application fertilizer and application. Control, fertilizer yeah. application and what have you. And he doesn't have money. How, how, I mean, how, how, how is he going, to, how is he going to, to, to succeed? And aside that, most of the farmers that we have today don't even see cocoa production as a business. Yeah. Why? They don't see it as a business. They see it as, you know, one, most of them are aged. Ah. Majority of them are aged. And the youth that we have now, and that is where government also need to work. Oh. They oh, need to work youth. on the youth. Mm. Mm. Youth, in a, youth should be encouraged to go into agriculture. But of course, the youth cannot go into agriculture if they see that most of their, their I mean, the, those in, 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 in the cocoa producing sector 
are not really making it. They are more or less, you know, into cocoa production for subsist uh, uh, subsistence, uh, I mean, uh, sake. sake, not really for business. And if youth of nowadays cannot really get a good means of livelihood in cocoa production, I bet you they cannot. Yeah. Ah. And that is where the government has to work. Uh, Mr. Olanika. Yes, Nigerian cocoa is, used to be highly sought after. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, they say we have some of the best aroma for our cocoa, you know, and, but things have been going up and down. You mentioned policies. Yeah. Whether those policies are working against us or we need newer policies, we don't know. What exactly are these policies you are referring to that we need to, be, uh, to put in place for our cocoa to come up again? Fine, thank you very much for that question. Um, actually, first and foremost, we need to revitalize uh, the Cocoa Regulation Board. The Cocoa Regulation Board, board yes. needs to be revitalized? Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, literature tells us that sometimes around 70s, stroke early 80s, mm -hmm. mm. the World Bank advised the African cocoa producing uh, states, uh, sorry, countries, to, to abolish their cocoa board, their mm. cocoa regulating board. Mm. And Nigeria went ahead and abolished it. But Ghana did not. Wow. Ivory Coast did it partially. And today we can see what they are experiencing. Now, cocoa board used to regulate uh, the cocoa economy. They used to regulate what goes on in the cocoa Sector. sector. You know, they regulate the price mm -hmm. to avoid fluctuations, I mean, fluctuations of mm. price, which is one of the major problems that we have, I mean, the farmers are facing. Because if this year, for example, your cocoa is, say, one million naira per ton, and next year, all of a sudden, it becomes 800. Without any warning. Without any warning, or perhaps 500. Wow. So it becomes a kind of discouragement for the farmers. A risk. Mm. But the cocoa board, you know, kind of uh, regulates some of these things. Then also you talk of the issue of quality. Mm. Quality. Quality of cocoa is also being regulated by this. I mean, by the, by, by the same cocoa board. But immediately after uh, they were abolished, most of the farmers went into sharp practices, you know, the, the normal duration for fermentation is no longer adhered to. Okay. Uh, they probably dry their cocoa just anywhere instead of a raised platform mm -hmm. and so many other mm -hmm. issues. So uh, all this culminates in reducing the quality of cocoa that is being exported from Nigeria. And today it's, an, it's more or less an ISO. But of course, that can be improved upon. Okay. If and only if the government can revitalize cocoa board. Yes, it might cost some money, but I think that can also be added, maybe to cream mandate crop, I don't know, I'm not, mm. because already we have uh, what it takes. We know about cocoa, we know, we know the quality that is, that is expected, we know, you know most of the rudiments and what have you. So it's just like creating a section and having a capacity building to man that area so that the quality of cocoa that is being produced in Nigeria can be enhanced. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us a wonderful information. It's a good conversation. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. You see, on Farm and Fortune, we have learned it's time for us to take back the glory of our cocoa industry in Nigeria. It's still Farm and Fortune. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Farm and Fortune DIY Hack. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a cake in a cup using cocoa powder. Add 4 spoons of flour. Add 4 spoons of sugar. Add 4 spoons of cocoa powder to the largest cup you can find. Add some milk. Add some oil or you can use butter. Mix properly and put in the microwave for 2 minutes. And there you have it, your cake in a cup. When you farm cocoa, over time, just like any other long-time crops, 
the nutrients in the soil reduce and it affects the yield from the tree. To maximize your tree's lifetime potential, you must pay attention to the depleted nutrients and replenish them. We have a soil expert in the house, someone who would help us know more about our soil in person of Babajide Ahmed. Thank you so much for coming on Thank the show. Thank you very much, Ellen. We have a few questions for you okay. and we want you to help us. No problem. What are the soil nutrients needed by a cocoa tree that reduce over time as the tree ages? Thank you very much. These nutrients are divided into two. Okay. Those are the macronutrients and the micronutrients. Okay. For the macronutrients, we have the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay. While for the ma a micronutrient, we have the boron, calcium, and magnesium. Thank you. But how can these nutrients be replenished for a better cocoa harvest? Thank you very much. The fastest way of replenishing these nutrients is through mineral fertilization. Okay. That's the fastest way of um, replenishing the nutrients that are being lost. You see, if you want to go into the business of cocoa, ah, do you know the cocoa? You've gotten the cocoa from our show, Farm and Fortune. The next segment is the game, game, game with Mr. Frank. How ready are you? I am ready. It's still Farm and Fortune. Enjoy. It's game time on Farm and Fortune, and you know how we do it on this show. 16 contestants compete for a grand prize of 500,000 Naira worth of farm impute in knockout stages. And so far, we've had farmers go head to head in trying to outdo each other to get to that prize. The stakes are high, but the rules of the game are very simple, all right? And... Uh, with this are the successful candidates. They paired up in two different teams, the orange team and the green team. This gentleman here was successful from the last knockout stages. And I have good news for all of you today. I once told you everybody is a winner on Farm and Fortune. Now, each one of you, for scaling through the knockout stage that you are coming from, you both, each one of you will get 20,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. Now, when you succeed in this round, if you pass this round, whoever becomes the winner in this game right now, that team gets 60,000 Naira worth of farm imputes. That is 30,000 Naira worth of farm imputes for each of you. Now, the game continues. The rules are very simple. I have questions here that you have to answer. Two teams, orange team and green team. The first team to press the bell when you hear the question and hear the options gets to answer the question. If you get it correctly, you get your point. If you fail to answer the question or you get the question wrong, then the opportunity goes to the next team. It's that simple. And if your team qualifies, you go to the next round. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Joining me on this particular game, for, right, for this particular part of the game, we have Mr. Joseph Oluwatobi. You're hey, welcome, sir. Yeah. And in his team, we have Mr. Olayenka Abiono. You're welcome. So that is the green team. And on the orange team, we have Mr. Saeed Afiz, partnering up with Mr. Abiodo Okunye. Are we ready? Yes, sir. All right. It's game time. The first question, fastest fingers. The major cocoa producing areas or states of Nigeria are all of these three, except one. A, Cross River, B, Ondo, C, Nasarawa. Okay, okay, you press the bell. Aye. <laughs> Is that a consensus? Orange C, all right, sir. Cross River. You are wrong. I'm sorry, that was the wrong answer. Autom automatically, the question goes to the green team. Green team. Nasarawa. Correct. Now the next question. Which of the following is harmful to a cocoa tree? A, direct sunlight, B, fertilized application, C, well-drained soil. Okay, green team. Direct sunlight. Sir, you are right. Congratulations to the green team. <laughs> All right, let's move on, let's move on. Which of these institutes is known for research in cocoa production? A. I A R B C R I N and C N C R I N C R I. Thank you very much. The question goes to 
Which of the following institutes is known for research in cocoa production? A I R B C R I N and C N C R I C I N. Okay? And you're right! Congratulations. Now the next question. The application of fertilizers to cocoa trees is mostly done in A. April and September, B January and March, and C July and August. April and September. Team <laughs> C. That was right. Okay. And at the end of that round, we are going to process your scores and let you know who the winner is. All right. Can I have my scores, please? All right, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the game, it was a tie. Team. Green team had 10 scores and the orange team had 10 scores. That means we're going to the sudden death question state where we ask a question and the first person to get it right automatically becomes the winner. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Which of these is not an aspect of the cocoa value chain? A, impute supply. B, processors, C, promoters, and D, exporters. Yep, promoters. I'm sorry, but that was the right answer. So we have a winner. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so the orange team gets 30,000 Naira worth of farm impute to each of the participants. Yeah. Plus your 20,000 Naira worth of farm impute guarantee. Everybody is a winner. Everybody goes on smiling. And you know what to do. Keep watching. You can also let us know what you think. Participate. Join us at www.farmandfortune.com. Reach out to us on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Subscribe, follow, and share. We'll be right back after this segment, so don't go anywhere. Frank, hmm? the stakes seem so high. Hmm. I'm not a gamer, but I have butterflies. You can imagine my own excitement. If you guys want to rewatch our game segment on today's show, you know what to do. Just go to our YouTube channel at Farm and Fortune. While you're there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And you know what? Follow us on all our social media platforms at Farm and Fortune to know the cocoa. To the cocoa. Mm. I'm Frank Donga. I'm Helen Paul. And see, see you, you next, next week. <laughs>